Hey that foos, Big T here back with another video and this is uh, a video discussing basically Nintendo's uh, current lack of a value proposition um, basically because of the recent announcement of Skyward Sword HD for the Switch um, there's kind of two sides uh, of the debate about, around that game I'm on the side of it's uh, overpriced and it should be a better value um, and unfortunately it's not and I'm gonna show some examples I'm gonna talk about you know stuff that Nintendo used to do um, because people will you know some people will just you know look at what I'm saying and feel like I'm trying to make an argument that isn't valid and ha that has merits and I I just I obviously I disagree with that um, and that's why I'm showing you some visual aids here today but I'm gonna try to go through the game of everything I don't want to take too much time on this video just kind of want to go through it at the end of the day it doesn't matter to me because I'm not buying Skyward Sword HD uh, basically because I feel like it's not that much of, a, of an upgrade um, certainly not worth you know a full $60 price tag and I'll explain why I feel that way so I'm gonna start off first by showing you some uh, PS2 classics if you will uh, remade in HD and uh, you'll see some differences as far as uh, what's going on here so um, let's start off with uh, Zone of the Enders HD um, you know not a super well-known uh, couple of games but made by Hideo Kojima uh, when he wasn't making Metal Gear he was making these games I really like uh, Zone of Enders uh, this is one and two both games together uh, remastered in HD so you have uh, you know nice HD visuals but you know that's dead franchise most people don't know about those games right so um, then we have the Ico collection or Eco collection uh, uh, Shadow of the Colossus and Eco um, both again remastered in HD uh, this game actually came out well uh, Shadow of Colossus anyway came out on PS4 and it was total remake I'll talk about that in a little bit too as well uh, but you know dead dead franchises nobody cares about those anymore so um, nobody would care to pay that much for HD versions right so you have Jack and Dexter uh, one through three so there's three games on here remastered in HD uh, look really nice and you know most of these games kind of really jumped out because uh, this is like the era that began HD uh, so these are the first games that came from standard definition to HD and they all look pretty good they look really good alright but you know dead franchise Jack and Daxter nobody cares about Jack and Daxter anymore they don't make them anymore so then you have Sly Cooper here um, as you can see there are a ton <laughs> of HD remasters on the PS3 from the PS2 um, that a lot of it had, probably had to do with the fact that it couldn't ga get games out quicker um, due to um, what you call uh, development issues with the PS3 it was a little bit hard to develop for but you know three games these are all three games except for Zone of the Enders uh, or Zone of the Enders and Eco which are two games remastered in HD um, but here we go uh, not quite dead franchise, uh, still around, Devil May Cry, and this is 1, 2, and 3, 2 is trash by the way, uh, but it's still 3 games in 1, and uh, you know, 3 games, it's 3 games uh, from a series all in one HD collection, um, and here we go with Jack and, or Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank now, you know, not a dead franchise, everybody's looking forward to Jack and, uh, Ratchet and Clank on PS5 right now, so clearly not a dead franchise uh, but you have uh, Ratchet and Clank, you have Ratchet and Clank going commando you have Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal all right here and there's some extra stuff that came with it like a voucher that says for uh, for access to the Sly Cooper Thieves and Time Demo you know stuff like that little doodickies doodickies? I don't think that's a word uh, I just made it up and uh, you know here again is another dead franchise <laughs> this is God of War and God of War 2 remastered in HD you guys already know what that's about. You know that game. Um, not quite dead franchise. And here is the two God of War games that came out on PSP. Remastered in HD. Yes, PSP games remastered in HD. Um, and uh, I just want to say most of these games, I believe, were $30 to $40. 
uh, brand new when they came out, remastered in HD. Um, and here we have uh, Kingdom Hearts. Um, which one is this one? This is the uh, uh, 1.5 remix. So you have Kingdom Hearts Final Remix in here, uh, released for the first time in North America. You have Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, card-based battle gameplay. And you have Kingdom Hearts uh, 358 Two Days HD Remastered Cinematics. So this is, I believe, the handheld ones from the PSP, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, right? Uh, I believe so. And this one here is Kingdom Hearts 2.5 which uh, gives you uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Final Remix, and like I said, Kingdom Hearts 1 Recoded. So what do they do to Recoded? Just HD remastered the cinematics and stuff like that. So that's all cool. Um, and then we have another dead franchise in Final Fantasy. Uh, <laughs> so this is Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2 remastered in HD. I'm not, I don't remember what the price was for this. It was square. Enix, so it's probably more they'd like to do uh, overpricing on things as well. Um, but like I said, most of those games were not full price games, and there were two or more games in the collection. So it didn't cost as much as uh, Skyward Sword uh, HD is going to cost. I'm showing you right here my copy of Skyward Sword, uh, the original game on the Wii. Uh, it came with well, this version anyway, came with a Wii Remote, a gold Wii Remote, uh, Wii Remote Plus, actually, because you needed that to play the game. Um, and it also came with a soundtrack CD, a Symphony soundtrack, which was, you know, not just, you know, tracks from the game, but um, not tracks from the game at all, but just orchestrated renditions of tracks in the game, which is it's beautiful. It's great. So you have that um, all together with the game itself. And it was $69.99, which is you know 70 bucks. Um, so ten dollars more than Skyward Sword uh, Remastered or Skyward Sword HD uh, for the Switch. Ten dollars more that cost, um, but it came with a $40 Gold Wii Remote Plus and a soundtrack CD. Pretty good value. So that would put it at about. Uh, let's see, $60 for the game. Um, uh, let's say $60 for the game. It might have been $50, I don't know, back then. Uh, but $60 for the game, $20, or $40 for the uh, for the Gold Wii Remote, so that's $100. Bucks. And then the soundtrack CD, whatever value you want to put on, you want to put on, let's say $10, bucks, $9.99. So $110 uh, value but only $10 more than what Skyward Sword uh, HD is going to cost uh, with nothing but just the game. And I must say, the visuals of that game surprised me, and not in a good way. Uh, I honestly and truthfully thought when they first showed it in the uh, Nintendo Direct that I was sitting there waiting, thinking, man, when are they going to switch over <laughs> to the uh, HD version? You know, because that's what they do sometimes. Look, what it, look how it looks now. But obviously, it is better looking. You can tell it's sharper. But that's it. It's just sharper uh, textures and whatnot. And uh, obviously, they also added, because they had to, because of the nature of the Switch, they added uh, physical controls for the uh, sword fighting, the sword wielding and stuff. So um, you guys, you know, I don't need to explain how that works, but it seems kind of jank to me um, to be free sword fighting using an analog stick that would usually control uh, your camera. I'm sure they'll work it out in some way where it's not too tedious, but I just think like, because not everything is like, you know, perfectly slash based combat in uh, Skyward Sword, sometimes you just kind of, you know, swinging your uh, sword around to take out enemies, lesser enemies that don't have the pattern thing going on. So, I think that's going to feel really stiff uh, trying to use a right analog stick to do sword fighting, but, you know, it is what it is. So, you know, I I'm pointing out because uh, that was one of the arguments against when I would point out these HD collections from other consoles uh, was that, oh, one was, oh, those are dead franchises, nobody cares about them, the value is going to be low in those. I'm like, all right, well, then I show you <laughs> games uh, that aren't dead franchises, like God of War and 
um, Ratchet and Clank and whatnot. Um, and there's multiple games in the collection for less than what Skyward Sword costs. Um, so let's just not, okay, you say let's not hold Nintendo to somebody else's standard, even though the Nintendo I know always had, you know, uh, value was a main point for them. It was a main thing that they wanted to give to their consumers, their customers and whatnot. So let's just use their example. Here we have uh, Wind Waker HD, which is quite beyond the visuals of the original Wind Waker game. Um, this looks pretty stellar compared to the original Wind Waker game. So um, there's that. But then there's also the ability to, you know, do um, real time, you know, basically uh, weapon changing and whatnot. You can you have your uh, on the Wii remote or Wii remote <laughs> on the Wii U gamepad. Um, you had all your items and whatnot right here. So your management was great. And you can pull up anything you want it right here in the quick menu, and it's fantastic. Um, and you know, you know, you can't duplicate the Wii U gamepad, uh, but they actually, I mean, they put some work into this. Um, they streamlined uh, a lot of the games or a lot of the levels uh, in the game or, ta or uh, quests, and so it wasn't as tedious. Um, your you can call the wind quicker. It wasn't the wait for that. Uh, the Triforce Shard Chase was was um, actually better, so they went in and actually did stuff in the code itself uh, to streamline the game more. Um, and you know the the lighting effects were great. They added some bloom lighting, which really made the game pop in HD. So I was expecting something like this for Skyward Sword, and not quite. Um, we didn't get, um, not really got that at all. Um, I was expecting that kind of a dramatic difference and there isn't that um, because Wind Waker's style is cell shaded and uh, Skyward Sword has this kind of watercolor look to it so I thought in HD that's going to look fantastic but no they didn't really do anything with it they didn't do anything with the lighting that really would have helped it pop um, it's just a straight up conversion to HD sadly um, and so again I bring this up because uh, this game was um, fifty dollars. Um, I you got there was a version of it with the Ganon statue. Um, I can't remember the price. I'll put it up. Um, and still a, a good value, really good value. And you can understand why um, this is still a better port than Skyward Sword's going to be because they put in some actual work into the gameplay of the game itself, uh, the menu system and all that. They reworked it um, to really benefit the Wii U gamepad. So um, there was that. And you know, this is the first time um, it was gorgeous to see Nintendo games in HD in games that you had played before. And it's gonna be not that kind of an impact when it comes to Skyward Sword, because it doesn't look as well. So then you have, uh, we also got uh, Twilight Princess HD, uh, which again, not as big of a leap visually, but you could tell they really went in and did some stuff. For one thing, I knew, uh, I know that they went in and actually changed textures. Um, and some of the textures were to basically prepare us for Breath of the Wild, because some of the stuff in that is leading to Breath of the Wild. I'm following a lot of Zelda channels, and they went through and they combed through and pointed, pointed out all these things. I was like, wow. But also, this game came with an amiibo, which is an awesome amiibo, uh, the Wolf Link and Midna amiibo, which is um, a $15 value, uh, but the game ended up only costing uh, 60 in total. So... The game itself was basically 50 um, and then you got the Amiibo for $10. Um, but I believe there are versions without it, you just paid 50 for it. Um, so again, uh, but this game all again all did some work. So if you played the Wii version, you know that they flopped the world itself to accommodate you know, Link being a right-handed wielder of the sword for that version, because you know most people are right-handed, so uh, unfortunately they uh, games tend to cater to us right-handed folks. Um, so, but the GameCube version uh, had, you know, Link was still a left-handed 
sword uh, wielder. So they went back to that world. They basically, uh, instead of the Wii version, um, which um, I don't know if the Wii version is the only version that gives it kind of a uh, what's called the P filter, <laughs> but um, they basically went back to the GameCube version and, and built up from there. And again, the map and all that is on your uh, Wii U gamepad, your weapon controlling, your know, all that stuff is there. I don't think they did too much with the, if they did anything with the gameplay like Skyward Sword or Wind Waker, uh, I don't think they did. But again, they streamlined your controls and it's fantastic to play on Wii U. Um, so even if you look at Nintendo's own um, uh, example, uh, Skyward Sword is overpriced. Now, at the end of the day, not that big of a deal. Obviously, it's still selling well. Skyward Sword is a fantastic game. Um, it has some flaws. Uh, there's a couple of bosses that annoy me. Um, uh, and, you know, some of the backtracking can get a little tedious, but it is so inventive in its gameplay. Uh, there's certain aspects in the gameplay that are really good. If you've never played Skyward Sword before, I say totally get this. Um, I, you're getting overpriced for it. Um, maybe get the Walmart discount, which gives you basically the ten dollar if you can if you can do that um, discount from the game. Um, that's a bit better. Um, I just wish they put more effort into it. There's nothing wrong with the game itself. I just feel like it is a lazy effort. Uh, once again, um, from a company that I'm not um, used to that, it's used to seeing that. Um, and it, you know, it saddens me as a longtime core Nintendo fan. Um, but like I said, Skyward Sword is a great game. Um, I do wonder if those people who don't like motion controls are going to be cool with what they're doing with the analog stick for your sword wielding. I don't know how intuitive that's going to be. I'm not sure. Um, but you know, it is what it is. It, they got it to work. Uh, with standard controls, uh, traditional controls, so um, it is what it is on that. But yeah, I mean, I just wanted to show you some different games, and again, uh, I could talk about uh, Shadow of the Colossus remake, totally ground up remake for the PS4. Um, I could talk about Ratchet and Clank as well on that front for PS4. Uh, those are totally from the ground up uh, remade, and those games were twenty dollars cheaper. Than what they're asking for Skyward Sword, and uh, none of those games, uh, other than, other than Shadow of Classes, because um, you know Team Ico is very dead at this point. Um, but uh, obviously, uh, Ratchet and Clank is a still ongoing franchise. Uh, Twenty dollars cheaper than Skyward Sword, and I understand that um, you know Zelda is a more lucrative IP, and you know Nintendo is not going to undercut the value of that but then my worry is what's going to happen because there's a lot of rumors around the fact that uh or the belief i should say not the fact that but the belief that uh in the uh, zelda 35th anniversary that these two games might be coming um uh these two games might be coming in a multi-pack for 60 dollars so are you still good if that's the case if that's true i don't think it's true because why would they sell skyward sword for sixty dollars on its own, and then give you these two for sixty. Um, I don't believe that will happen, but we'll see. Um, but if that does happen, do you still feel good about paying sixty bucks for only one game in Skyward Sword? Uh, that is my wonder. So let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments below. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some <laughs> disagreeing, which is fine. That's how this works. Um, but can you counter? what I'm saying here like can you legitimately counter uh, the value proposition I'm making here so let me know in the comments below thank you as always for watching and listening and now see you folks next time peace out